Talking with the experts. In episode 561, learn how to create 30 days of content in just 90 minutes with Erin Whitnish's expert system. The hardest part is always putting yourself out there for the first time. And I always have this challenge. If you haven't put a video out there before, it's like, get your phone out, introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Aaron. I've got a business called Content Only. What questions you want to know about content marketing? I promise my next videos are going to get better. I just need some ideas to, to get going. Put them below. So that's your first video. Introduce yourself, promote some in- engagement with the audience and post that because once you've done that, you've gotten over the biggest hurdle, which is getting started. And then once you've ticked that box, you do go to a system that you show up to, whether it's once a month or even less than that sometimes, and you have the conversation. So it's batched, it's put in the calendar, you know exactly when you're going to do it each month. And then you've got your questions that you did through that research phase. And then you have that chat with a colleague, someone you enjoy talking to, and then you just use that system to keep repurposing the content and getting it out consistently. That would be my advice. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking With The Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Talking with the experts is all about business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms, and on YouTube. Today, my guest is Erin Whitnish, and Erin's going to be discussing with us the 30 Days in 90 Minutes content creation system for business owners. Now, this is going to be absolutely wonderful because we all want to know how we can create content in the shortest amount of time because creating content can be quite uh, time consuming. Now, a little bit about Aaron. Aaron is the co founder of Content Only, specializing in the 30 Days in 90 Minutes content creation system. And that's all I've got to say about Aaron. He lives in Australia, I can tell you that much. He lives in Melbourne, which is really lo- lovely to have a, an Australian guest on. Aaron, welcome to Talking with the Experts. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Rose. I've been longing for an Australian podcast appearance. So this is a very special moment for me. Wonderful. I'm I'm really glad. Yes, I don't get many Australian guests, so it's good that um, uh, accents aren't confused. <laughs> That's it. We're just a short flight away from each other. It's brilliant. We are absolutely. Erin, how did you get started in in uh, you know this um, content creation system? Because it sounds really fascinating. Yeah. Well, the backstory is that I'm terrible with my hands. So my brother, he's a carpenter. My dad's very handy. They can all build things. And I never had that practical skill set. The one thing that I was always able to do was write. And so when I first went into business, I used to write these how-to posts. And that back before there was chat GPT and all these shortcuts. And when I was really young and dealing with business owners as a marketing agency, that was my way of edifying that I knew what I was doing. So I could give the strategy away and write it out or talk it through on video. So it was actually through content. I was able to get clients in the very early days. I launched my agency in 2010. And then over the years, we found that the biggest challenge for business owners is the content creation time factor. Then once they've got it, what do you even do with the content? So as more and more people heard that we were helping businesses create content using a system, we've just had lots of people come and work with us. And then we came up with this model that requires them to show up for usually less than 90 minutes a month and we get all their video and written content through the process. So it's just been an evolution over the years. Wow, sounds sounds simple. But how simple is it is the question because, you know, I spend a good couple of hours every month doing, uh, you know, creating content for the following month. And it's it, it's not only the creation though, it's also the posting of it. So how simple mm-hmm. is your system? Yeah. The first part's ideas. 
what do you even talk about? And the easiest way to solve this problem if you're a business owner is go to Google and take a search that your target audience might type in. Let's say you're a mortgage broker, you might put in interest rates, you might put in home loans, property market as an example. If you scroll down a little bit, there's this section that says people also ask. And that'll give you a list of the queries that your target customers are typing in and searching online. Then you click the little down arrow, you get three or four more queries, click it again, more questions. And you just do this with four or five topics that you would talk about with your target audience. And that solves the problem of coming up with content ideas. So that's step one in the process. This sounds so simple. Now, I hadn't thought about doing that. I, you know, I do a lot of quotes and motivational quotes, inspirational quotes, and then I repurpose stuff that I did last year or the year before. Nice. <laughs> So I just put a, the same words, different graphic, but sometimes not even that. So it's when I get really lazy. But, you know, I guess doing that is is great. But what if you can't think of a topic, you know, like that you want to get for your content? Because, you know, some people are even stuck about finding just a topic um, that they can use for that particular month. There's a couple of other tools that, like the steroids version of the free Google approach. There's one that we use for our clients. It's called vidIQ. And you can take any word, even if you're stuck, just put any word into that. It'll give you hundreds of ideas in seconds. And then those hundreds of ideas, you might go, oh, that's a topic I can put in again to get the next set of ideas. And that'll give you 300 questions in the space of three seconds. So that's, that's the steroids version. Then you've got chat GPT and you can have a conversation with chat GPT, catch and pitch, go, I've got no ideas. This is what my business is. This is what I do. Can you help me out with some content ideas? So there's a few workarounds if, if you really get stuck and you don't even have a topic to put into Google. Mm, so, you know, how can you, I guess 90 minutes really doesn't seem like a, a, a long time. Um, you know, it's only an hour and a half. If you put it, I mean, 90 minutes sounds longer than if you say an hour and a half. I don't know why, but anyway. How can you know you can generate that in for thirty days? But you know what if what what if you don't want to spend that ninety minutes? I mean, I know that's you know not a long time, but ninety minutes can be quite a long time in someone's business. Most of our clients would do about thirty minutes. Ninety is kind of the higher end. We always go with the sort of the maximum amount of time that it takes because with the model there can be tech glitches. So explain how it works. So you get your questions through that step one that we spoke about. And then what you do is you set up a conversational approach on a platform like Zoom, like we're doing right now. And you have someone on your team, whether it's a colleague, it could even be a client, could just be a family friend. And they've got the questions that your target clients and customers are searching online. So you're going to solve their biggest problems. And just like you're having a chat on FaceTime, you don't need scripts. You don't need any fancy equipment. You just need to show up on your smartphone and your friend, the person that you have really good rapport with, just asks you the questions and you just answer them back and you record it. And that's step number two, which is the essentially the 90 minutes maximum part of the process. So that's step number two in the three-step process. Well, what's the third step then? Well, you got to, then you've got a recording. So how do you turn that into 30 days of content? So we call that step repurpose. Now, if you're, a business owner that doesn't have access to an editor or someone that can help cut those into shorter clips for you, there's tools like Opus Clip or Get Munch, and you just give the recording to those AI tools and it'll cut them and repurpose them for you. And they also integrate with your social media accounts. So it can post to the platform for you, which cuts that part of the equation. It'll write the copy, the headlines and so forth. The only challenge is it might give you clips that don't correspond to the questions that you're targeting. So you'll get a lot of clips, but they might not be specifically the questions that you are answering in the conversation. So that's one of the downsides and you may have to check the captions and ensure that they're accurate. So that's the AI approach. If you're bootstrapping and you don't have a budget for an editor, if you do have a budget for an editor, it's as simple as you give them the recording and you can find an editor on a freelancing platform like Upwork, any of the freelancing sites and say, hey, can you please cut a clip from each of my responses to the questions, make it sub 60 seconds, cut out all the ums, ahs, you knows. Can you put out custom branding on the video with the captions? 
and then send them all back when they're ready to done. So then you've got all your videos ready to go, one for each question that you answered. And then on the same site, you could also find someone that's a content writer that can schedule and put all the posts out onto social media for your business at the right time with the right copy to go with it. God, you're on the winner. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the three steps. Absolutely. Now, I guess... Um... I guess the, another question would be, you know, what what is a simple process about, you know, content for social media is really great, but what if you want to write an article? Would you use the same process? I'll give you that process because the written content's very handy for, for business owners in a lot of cases. So there's a tool called rev.com. So you just give it the same video file that you recorded on Zoom. We use Google Meet for this because then you can just share the Google Drive link straight to Rev. It'll transcribe it all into text. So you've got everything that came out of your mouth and you've got it in text format. Then you would take it to a tool like ChatGPT to get it to proofread it because that'll do it in a couple of seconds. Grammarly will show you all the mistakes and all the edits and you'll have to manually do it. So then you've got a nice polished proofread uh, transcript and then you could give it to someone again to repurpose and rewrite into article format or you could ask chat gpt hey can you this is the instructions you got to prompt engineer it this is the article i'm going for this is the hook this is the format here's the transcript can you please generate the article so there's a few different workarounds to get your long form written content as well using the model so i wish it was that simple i wish i had known all this <laughs> Months ago when I started writing all my articles. <laughs> it took took me 14 years to work this out, Rose, so don't feel bad about it. <laughs> I guess, you know, if, if, you know, a lot of us are used to, you know, writing content and, and, and you know, doing all the, doing it the long way. But, you know, for, for those who are just starting out, you know, with, with social media in their business, because I know a lot of people still aren't using social media to the best of their ability to get the word out. Um, and, you know, they're still um, not posting like every consistently. They're not posting something every single day so they get their name out there. So starting out, what would be your best advice for somebody that wants to create consistent content? The hardest part is always putting yourself out there for the first time. And I always have this challenge if you haven't put a video out there before, it's like, get your phone out, introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Aaron. I've got a business called Content Only. What questions you want to know about content marketing? I promise my next videos are going to get better. I just need some ideas to, to get going. Put them below. So that's your first video. Introduce yourself. Promote some in engagement with the audience and post that because once you've done that, you've gotten over the biggest hurdle, which is getting started. And then once you've ticked that box, you do go to a system that you show up to, whether it's once a month or even less than that sometimes, and you have the conversation. So it's batched, it's put in the calendar, you know exactly when you're going to do it each month. And then you've got your questions that you did through that research phase. And then you have that chat with a colleague, someone you enjoy talking to, and then you just use that system to keep repurposing the content and getting it out consistently. That would be my advice. Yeah, great advice. Great advice. I mean, I mean, and what if you don't want to use video in your content? You know, a lot of us don't like appearing on camera. You know, we've oh. got some, some, you know, dislikes about <laughs> yeah. we don't like the way we talk or the way we speak or, you know, lots of other things. And, you know, they're quite legitimate reasons. But what if they don't like to use video or be in front of a camera and they want to do other kinds of content i'm yet to meet too many people that enjoy seeing themselves on video and watching themselves back so that's very normal to want to avoid video but what i would say is this video is the one way that you can separate and stand out from competitors because anyone can copy a post anyone can copy an image but when your name your face and voice is online they're connecting with a human it's not just a brand and a logo it's a it's a person and that creates trust transference i think for local businesses one of the best things that you can do is actually call out your location so i for example i'm in melbourne i say hey melbourne business owners and and put, do that in the video so then you're connecting with people that are in the same location and service area and then go in and just help people come from the angle. What can I share that's going to make someone's life better, going to solve a problem, going to teach them how to get an outcome? Because then it's not about you. It's about the other person and helping them. And I think that's the mindset shift. 
And I believe, and I've seen this firsthand, the businesses that are willing to put their names and faces and voices out there, despite all the fears and the lack of confidence and uh, and we all have the same reservations, they're the ones that very quickly attract an authentic tribe of people that follow their company and it makes it much easier to get clients than those that are hiding behind text and photos. So I'd say everyone has the same fears and doubts, do it anyway. Yeah, I yeah, I'm not one for I, I mean I can do this podcast, it doesn't worry me. I love, you know, I love the fact that I'm meeting new people, but for me to do it on my own, it like I just can't I, I just have this mind block that, you know, either I can't say what I want to say, I get tongue tied, I'm you know, I miss the mark completely or I overshare or you know, there's lots of things that I I don't do because I have this phobia about doing video on my own so how can, is there some things that we can practice that um you know will, would help people like me well the conversational approach was the solution to that funnily enough because everyone has the same problem i have the same problem if i try and stare down a camera or an iphone to shoot a piece of content i instantly go into my head go oh that's silly or i elaborated there or, i said this word too many times when i was speaking so you want to take it again my advice is stick with the conversational approach and have someone there. It's just so much easier. If you do need to do a face to camera video for, for whatever reason, it's just relax and just keep it rolling. So you can go again, you can do a double take. It's okay to repeat a sentence if you want to say it a different way, not put too much pressure on yourself. But that conversational model, like we're doing right now, I get it because when I do my solo podcast episodes, it takes me an hour to to get into it and go, okay, I'm actually getting into the flow here. But when I show up and just chat to you, and we've only just met today, it's not a problem. So I have the exact same issue. Just about everyone I know has the exact same issue. So I'd say try and introduce the conversational model because it's so much easier to get video done than staring down a camera and doing take after take after take. I totally agree with that. Um, I guess... Um, you know, if you're writing content for Facebook specifically, um, video is is pretty much the way to go these days. I think the algorithms taking up uh, uh, is is going better if you're posting video um, than if you're just posting written content. But you know, do you know much about LinkedIn and how the algorithm works with video there? LinkedIn's an interesting platform because that first forty minutes is pretty. Is pretty important when you post a piece of content. And if you get traction in that first 40 minutes, it tends to you know, take on a life of its own. So each time someone engages with your content on LinkedIn, it then can go into their feed to their network. So one of the tactics that I haven't personally used this, but some people that I know that take LinkedIn very seriously is they have a small community of people that know when they're going to post the content each week. So they do get some people to come and interact on it straight away, which helps with that traction. I'm not sure how qualified the eyeballs are that that ends up getting in front of, but I found with LinkedIn specifically, posting in the morning is a really good time. So we generally post between 7 and 9am in most cases. And the format with video, I haven't had heaps of, like you're saying, heaps of traction with my videos personally on LinkedIn. I have seen some people do it really, really well. But again, it probably comes down to the hook, what's in the content, how you're approaching it, who's in your network. In my case, my network's all over the place. So I talk about content, but a lot of the people that I connected with in the early days, it wasn't because of content. So I'm putting out things that they don't really have an interest in. So if you build a network from scratch, let's say you're in, we've got a client that's in rail engineering. So all the content that they put out is about rail engineering. Their whole network is in the industry. So everyone jumps on it because it's of interest. So my invitation to someone on LinkedIn would be really be discerning about who goes into your network and who you accept because whatever you're talking about needs to be of interest to those people for them to engage and then infiltrate the other network. So there are a couple of things that I consider if I was putting content on LinkedIn from scratch. Yeah, that's really great advice because, yeah, I've noticed some of my posts, um, uh, you know, I, I always put, post a, a, a short video uh, for my um, podcast. Uh, so my guests have a, you know, 30-second spot um, on LinkedIn uh, and uh, just, just to say uh, a little, it's just a little snippet of, you know, what the podcast is about or some content that's in there. 
um, and they seem to do fairly well. But I've noticed some of my written content is like just blown up out of it goes mad. But you, and you can never really tell with LinkedIn. I think that it's it's a algorithms really up and down. I th- I find definitely I have a very similar experience. I've had written posts. It, it's, I find too, if I talk about very personal stuff, it goes quite well because everyone can relate to it. But if I go into my subject matter of expertise, it doesn't go so great because not a lot of people are like, oh, I'm on LinkedIn. I really want to see someone tell me about how many hashtags to use on a post or what time to post my video. So I understand that my audience just isn't really looking for the content that I'm putting out. But if one or two people see it and they that does help them, then that's okay with me. But like I said, if you focus on your sector and you add people to your network on LinkedIn that are interested in that particular topic, you'll probably find a lot more people interact and you get a lot better performance than people like me who are all over the place with what they've built up over many years and have niched after building their networks as opposed to when they're starting to build their networks. Oh, I'm getting, I get all these um, podcast uh, agencies from overseas wanting to promote my podcast or can they help me better my, my uh, YouTube channel? And I think, I mean, you know, I, why would I want to network with those when all they want to do is sell me a service? There's you know? a lot of yeah inbound or unsolicited messaging going on on the LinkedIn platform. And if you have a podcast, if you have a business, you're going to get those messages all day long. And to be honest, like if, if you, you know yourself producing a podcast, you go, you look at these people, they don't have their own podcast. They haven't got their own optimized channels. They aren't doing their own SEO in a lot of cases. So I always have a quick look and go, well, what are you doing and succeeding at the thing that you're telling me to do? And yeah. 99% of the time, the answer is no. So therefore it's, uh, I'm not interested. No, I don't, I don't engage with them. Usually I just um, usually block them or say, I don't know who they are. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we'll connect and I'll be someone that jumps on your on your content for you. So there you go. <laughs> I'm just about to send you a, a connection request. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I won't do it while we're talking because then I'd I'd be looking at a screen and I'd just be like this. <laughs> That's, yeah, the, it's when you're having a business meeting and you know someone's not paying attention, they're off doing an email or a chat. So. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to go back to one of the comments you made about hashtags. Now, I've—I don't know if you've heard of Mary Smith, but she's the queen of Facebook uh, globally. And uh, there's been some talk in her group about the use of hashtags on Facebook, especially um, that they're, they're not really um, a thing to be doing anymore, like on fa- Facebook and uh, uh, Instagram. What about? What is your advice on the use of hashtags and how many should we actually be using? If you Google just about every platform's the same rule. So rule of thumb, one to five hashtags is the sweet spot. So you go more than that, then you, you're kind of giving it too much information. Hashtags really there because people follow hashtags and people search hashtags. So you're optimizing your content to say, hey, if someone searches for content marketing, I've got that hashtag and the algorithm will decide whether your post is worthy of putting into into the feed in that case. They're less relevant because it, the algorithm is very intuitive these days. It knows what people want to see, knows their pattern, so it tends to place the right content. You, you wonder why you keep seeing the same things over and over again. That's a very talented algorithm that, that knows what you're into. So they're less important. I would So, for example, if there's a local business, that it has a fixed service area, I would put a local hashtag in there because people in the community might be following and searching that. We have a hair salon that we work with. It's in Tamworth. So always make sure there's a Tamworth hashtag in there. And we use Tamworth in the copy to try and show it to the local community and then boost it. Boosting's one of the underrated things that business owners can do. If you want to control who sees your content, you give Facebook or Meta a couple of dollars. You can say, show it to people in Tamworth that are female and they're 25 upwards. And it'll tell you roughly estimated how many people that's going to reach in your target client avatar. So that's always one play business owners could use to get it in front of the right customers. But I see most people either go over the top and use way too many hashtags, just use the one 
or two that are actually relevant for the content and what you're talking about. If you want hashtags to have any sort of play in the success of your post getting to the right audience. Yeah, I heard about hashtags that um, to make them, you know, reach the SEO target that you want is uh, words that are actually in your article or in your content, use those as hashtags. That's what I've learned. And I don't know whether you agree with that or you don't. Oh, if you're writing a post and you're targeting a topic, you'd want that in the headline of the post. You'd want to use it a couple of times in in the text, in the body of the post, and then put it in the hashtag. That's the easiest way to optimize and tell a platform, this is what the content's about. This is what I who I want to show it to people that are following content marketing or they're following mortgages or whatever it is. So yeah, you can absolutely do that to try and help the, the the platform understand what the content is about so they can get it to the right people. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. I thought that was the, the thing, something I've learned along the way. Um, just, yeah, just post what's relevant to the post. I mean, uh, sorry, post your hashtag relevant to the post. Correct. Use words that are in the post or article. Um, Aaron, uh, you, we can be found on Facebook at um, a.witnish or you can be found on LinkedIn at Aaron Whitnish. And you've got a website, it's contentonly.au and uh, listeners can download the 30 Days in 90 Minutes content creation system for free. Yes. So Aaron, that to all of our listeners today. And Aaron, I would love you to share some words of wisdom about other than what you've shared already, because it's absolutely been mind blowing. Thank you so much for that. Um, some words of wisdom around, you know, content creation or some life tidbit or, you know, just something that, that will, um, you know, keep our audience entertained or enlightened. Uh, a lot of people focus on the wrong thing when it comes to content. They focus on the reach, the likes and the engagement. And that's, especially if you're in business and you sell a service or you sell a product, do you want to reach 10 million people in the basement at home playing video games that have no capacity to, to buy your product or service or do you want to reach customers? So when it comes to content, you want to always have who is this content for in the back of your mind? Because if you solve your target client's biggest problems, you then become the solution to their problems, which is when they trust you and they're likely to transact. So forget all the vanity metrics, just focus on creating content for the right audience. Don't worry about how many people it reaches because you're much better off getting in front of five people that are qualified to buy your product or service and have a need for it or a want for it than 10 million people that would never be in a position to transact at all. So it's just having that understanding that it's not about the width, it's about the depth. That's probably the biggest piece of wisdom I can leave the audience with. Absolutely love that. I think that's really great. I mean, you know, it's like podcast channels, you know, you get all these marketers, you know, I can get you to 10,000 views or whatever, but, you know, do you really want 10,000 views, you know, when they're people that aren't going to engage with you anyway, or do you want that five that, you know, you know that they may not buy something, but they'll be interested and they'll share your content. So I exactly. think it's the smaller, smaller, the lesser of two evils, I suppose. Exactly. I think the narrower you go, the easier it actually is to monetize as a business. So don't be afraid to niche down and speak to a very specific audience. It'll go great for your back end. Absolutely. Totally. 100% agree. Aaron, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's lovely to meet you. Um, I'm going to go and chase you off on LinkedIn in a minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rose. I've had a lot of fun. All right. Thanks so much. And I'll talk to you again soon. Done. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. <laughs>